Welcome to chapter five, where Gatsby and Daisy are finally going to meet. So, in case you need a refresher, Nick is going to invite Daisy, his cousin, to tea at his house, and then Gatsby is going to just pop, pop in, just stop by and be like, oh, Daisy, and act like this was just out of the blue, they randomly met up, even though Gatsby has planned the whole thing. So, we must also remember that though Nick lives next door to Gatsby in his mansion, Nick does not have a mansion. He has a tiny little cottage um, that would be far less spectacular compared to Gatsby's house. Now, so when Nick gets home after meeting with Jordan Baker, who informs him of all of the happenings with Gatsby and Daisy when they were teenagers, when he gets home, Gatsby is waiting up for Nick to figure out what the answer is. Is Nick going to invite Daisy over? So they have a little conversation. Finally, Nick says, I talked to Jordan Baker. I'm going to invite Daisy to tea. So Gatsby's all excited. You can tell he was nervous about Nick's answer. Now he's all excited um, and they're going to plan to have tea. Now, <clears throat> because Nick is helping Gatsby, Gatsby offers Nick a job. He talks about how he knows Nick doesn't make much money, but he is trying to sell bonds, and he um, is trying to give him a business deal, which Nick quickly declines by saying, I've got my hands full. <laughs> so, after that, uh, Gatsby's like, okay, he feels like he should give Nick something for doing this, but Nick's like, nope, I'll just do it. Uh, no big deal. So the day comes when Daisy is supposed to come to Nick's house, and it is pouring rain. Daisy's supposed to be there at four. Gatsby has someone come to do the lawn because he thinks Nick's lawn is not pristine enough. Um, he also has people come over and bring flowers and, I mean, really doing Nick's yard up to the nines. And then Gatsby shows up in a white flannel suit, silver shirt, and gold collared tie. Now, the reason for rain. There's never just random rain in a book. Even with all the money he has, he still cannot control every aspect the one imperfection is that in this is the rain, which he cannot control. When Gatsby gets to Nick's house, he's very nervous, very fidgety, um, almost like a teenager about to go on his first date. So they kind of have an awkward little conversation, and then it gets to half past three. So it's 3.30, Gatsby's still super nervous, and then he finally gets up, Says he's going home and he says, nobody's coming to tea, it's too late. Um, again, more of his nervousness. And about that time, Daisy pulls up into the yard. So Daisy gets there. They have a little uh, conversation. And then when Nick brings Daisy inside from the car, they go into the living room and there's no one there. Gatsby has left. And about that time, there's a knock at the door. And when Nick goes to open it, Gatsby is there, drenching, soaking wet, uh, waiting to come inside. So you have to remember, Gatsby went out the back door as Daisy and Nick were coming in, walked around the house in the pouring rain so that he could knock on the door to make it seem like he just stopped by. He's still super nervous, and Nick is trying to mediate the conversation, and it's not going very well as Gatsby starts off his conversation with Daisy with, we've met before. He's, he's doing great, just doing great. And then Daisy says, we haven't met for many years, and Gatsby quickly says, five years next November. This tells us that he is keeping track 
And we can assume that for five years, he has not strayed from Daisy. We also have to remember, Daisy strayed from him. She's now married with a kid. So there's a difference there that we need to keep in mind. As T goes on, Gatsby kind of keeps himself in the shadows, stays out of the conversation while Nick and Daisy are socializing. So Nick decides that he's going to leave and Gatsby does not like this idea and he starts freaking out and Nick finally tells him he's acting like a little kid and he's being rude. So Gatsby decides he's going to go in there and be a man. <clears throat> so Nick goes outside for a little while and hangs out under a big tree that's stopping the rain. After that, he goes back in, and it seems that Gatsby and Daisy have calmed down a little bit, and they're not so awkward. Even so, that when he comes in, they don't even notice that he has come back in. And he says they were sitting at either end of the couch looking at each other as if some question had been asked or was in the air, and every vestige of embarrassment was gone. And Daisy's kind of crying a little bit. Gatsby's glowing. He has gotten what he wanted. He was nervous that Daisy wouldn't want to see him, and yet she wants to see him. So when Nick comes back in, he tells them it stopped raining, and now Gatsby wants them to come to his house to show Daisy around. Remember, the reason Gatsby bought this house is to impress Daisy, and it's also across the bay from Daisy's house. So keep that in mind. So they decide they're going to go to Gatsby's house. They're waiting on Daisy to kind of like wash her face. And Gatsby mentions to Nick, my house looks well, doesn't it? See how the whole front of it catches the light. So we know that Gatsby, know, Gatsby enjoys his house. He knows that it's nice. And then he goes on, it took me just three years to earn the money that bought it. And here Nick gets a little... um uneasy about this and says, I thought you inherited your money, which is what Gatsby told him before. And Gatsby recovers and said he did, but then he lost it in the panic of the war. And then Nick goes on. I think he hardly knew what he was saying, for when I asked him what business he was in, he answered, that's my affair, before he realized that it wasn't the appropriate reply. So Gat Nick asked him, what business are you in? And Gatsby gets very defensive. This should be a red flag for us and tell us that whatever he's involved in is probably not something he should be involved in, probably not legal. And then he kind of regains himself and comes back to being a little more polite <laughs> with the question. <clears throat> so they have a little conversation about that. Then they go over to Gatsby's house. Now, they're next door neighbors. They could just walk across the lawn they don't do that. They go down Nick's driveway out to the road and then up Gatsby's driveway because he wants Daisy to see his house from the front with the sunlight hitting it and walk through the gates and see the magnificence of the front of the house. So when they get to the house, he shows her around to all the rooms and the libraries and the fancy things. And Nick notices he hadn't once ceased looking at Daisy, and I think he revalued everything in his house according to the measure of response it drew from her well-loved eyes. So everything in his home, he's looking to Daisy to make sure that she likes it. And he's super distracted by Daisy. Um, Nick goes on, he was consumed with wonder at her presence. He had been full of the idea so long, dreamed it right through to the end, waited with his teeth set, so to speak, at an inconceivable pitch of intensity. Now in the reaction, he was running down like an overwound clock. Gatsby has waited for this moment for five years. He has worked for five years to get enough money to be acceptable for Daisy. He's worked five years to get all these nice things that he thinks Daisy will like. We have to remember, though, he's probably missing the whole point of what Daisy liked. He is new money. Daisy is old money. Old money is very refined. New money is flashy. 
So we have to remember this might not be Daisy's cup of tea, even though she's being polite right now. Then we end up going to Gatsby's room and he has this huge closet with tons of shirts of all different fabrics and colors and patterns. And he starts just throwing them around and Daisy's catching them. And then suddenly, with a strange sound, Daisy bent her head into the shirts and began to cry. They're such beautiful shirts, she sobbed, her voice muffled in the thick folds. It makes me sad because I've never seen such, such beautiful shirts before. Here's the deal with the shirts. She's not just crying because the shirts are pretty. She's not that dramatic. Her husband, Tom, is old money. Old money would not wear such flashy, colorful shirts. So Tom's wardrobe probably consists of a lot of white, gray, blue, black. When she says she's never seen such beautiful shirts before, she doesn't have someone, she's not married to someone who has such beautiful, fun shirts. So she's crying for this thing that she has missed out on. And then they continue their tour of the house. And then they start looking across the bay and Gatsby mentions to her, you always have a green light that burns all night at the end of your dock. So he's now told Daisy he knows that her house is across the bay. And remember, he's reaching towards this green light before he gets Daisy. He's reaching out toward it. And that's like his dream. The green light is his goal, his dream. And then Nick notices possibly it had occurred to him that the colossal significance of that light had now vanished forever. He got his dream. He's worked five years to get that green light and now he has it. Compared to the great distance that had separated him from Daisy, it had seemed very near to her, almost touching her. It had seemed as close to it as a star to the moon. Now it was again a green light on a dock. His count of enchanted objects had diminished by one. So he's worked so hard to get to this green light, and now that he has Daisy, this green light has no more significance. So it's almost like you try so hard to get to a thing. Imagine waiting so long to go on vacation, and then you finally do it, and maybe it's not as exciting as the waiting for it. That's kind of what's happening here. So they have um, a couple of more conversations and then we find out Gatsby has newspaper clippings of Daisy. Guys, I want you to think about when they were together, they were 19 or so. And you have to remember, Daisy's now married, but Gatsby has kept up with Daisy. Uh, this is kind of creepy. It's a little stalkery. Then Gatsby gets a call and he's talking about a small town and he can't talk now um, and someone's no use to them if Detroit is his idea of a small town. So again, random weird conversations on the phone. So we go on, uh, they keep having a couple of conversations. He has Cliff Springer, who is a guy that lives in his house who's kind of like homeless, come and play the piano. And then Nick notices again, as I went over to say goodbye, I saw that the expression of bewilderment had come back into Gatsby's face. As though a faint doubt had occurred to him as to the quality of his present happiness. Almost five years. There must have been moments, even that afternoon, when Daisy tumbled short of his dreams. He has imagined being with Daisy for five years. Having her come to his house for five years. There has to be something in what's actually happening, the thing that he waited five years for, that's going to let him down because reality is never as good as what you dream it. And he's had a long time to dream of this moment. So there's got to be something that's fallen short. So he's almost questioning whether this is how happy he actually is. We also have to remember, she's married. It seems that he thought that he would just whisk Daisy away and she would move in with him and they would live happily ever after and ride into the sunset. But he's had to realize that's not a full reality. Daisy's married and does not seem intent on leaving Tom. I mean, he's cheating on her and she's still with him. 
All right, and then Nick uh, steps out, and that is the end of chapter five. So we're gonna see kind of this budding romance between Daisy and Gatsby. She's gonna come around a lot more. But we have to wonder, is this going to go any further? Is Gatsby finally living the dream? Because his dream was not to be rich. His dream was to get Daisy. And we have to remember, he had to get rich to get Daisy, or so he thinks. So does Gatsby understand Daisy, and does Daisy understand Gatsby? We have a lot of questions. We have a lot of love triangles going on because not only is Tom cheating, on Daisy. Daisy is now cheating on Tom. So we have to keep that in mind. Um, and eventually we'll see who ends up with who. Uh, 